All right. We're excited here. Uh, so nice to meet you guys. Uh, my name is Ken Su. I am on the uh, Cloud AI team at Google, uh, overseeing the healthcare industry from an outbound product perspective. It is my uh, great pleasure to get to introduce our next speaker today. Uh, this is Laurent Bellazin from BenchSci. He is the uh, CEO and founder of BenchSci. He uh, founded it with two other co-founders about 10 years ago. Uh, and BenchSci is on a mission to uh, use AI to be able to help accelerate both the speed and quality of drug discovery and R&D, particularly in the preclinical phase uh, of kind of pharmaceutical research. Uh, and so quite a, uh, what's been really fascinating to see is actually that um, in the last year, they actually just announced the, kind of the first commercially available, uh, and it's kind of evidence-based mapping of underlying disease biology. Uh, and they've had a lot of great success with this. What's really impressive for me is even as a startup, if you look at their customer list, uh, they, already do, they already are working with over 75% of the top 20 pharmaceutical companies. They already have something like over 4,000 or something academic medical institutions that are working with them, 50,000 scientists that are already using their products. Um, and from a team perspective, they have about 350 folks. He's, uh, Laurent's already kind of raised over 170 million including some top ventures like Gradient Ventures from Google. Uh, and so it's my great pleasure to let Laurent kind of give the next speech. So please give me a nice warm welcome for Laurent. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ken. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm super excited for this conversation because while it might get super scientific and technical, we are talking about a subject that impacts every single person in this room, which is our health and the health of our loved ones. So before I kind of delve in into what we do, okay, sorry, before, before I delve in and talk about, I thought they were talking to me. Be, before I delve in and talk about what we do, just want to give some overall context on the company so you kind of know where I'm coming from. So uh, we were founded in 2015, so it's not an overnight success. It's been eight years of very, very hard work, I guess almost nine. We raised over more or less $200 million from tier one investors. We closed our D round last year from Generation, which is Al Gore's fund. We are science first and tech deep company. So we're 350 people. The majority of that is actually R&D. And we have pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio between engineers, machine learning scientists, and PhD scientists, biologist scientists, working in the company because we are building a solution at the end of the day that serves the smartest scientists in the world. We work with the majority of big pharma today, and we have over 50,000 scientists that are using our platform. So what do we do? I think that over the last couple of decades, we've seen some tremendous advancements in drug discovery. Things like CRISPR, genome sequencing, uh, AlphaFold, and so on and so on. Yet, unfortunately, we are losing the battle against diseases. And if you look at some of the stats um, today, between five and 6% of drug discovery projects actually get to a clinical trial. Out of that cohort, which are projects that you worked on for over seven years and spent almost $200 million on, 90% fail because we might be good at curing cancer in mice, but it just doesn't translate into humans. It takes absolutely forever to develop new drugs. We're talking between eight and 14 years to bring a drug to market. And it costs absolutely a fortune, which is over $2 billion. The worst part of all of this is actually that it's only getting worse, and it's not getting better. And the reason for this is ironically very simple, which is the biology of the diseases that we are trying to cure today is extremely complex. And in fact, it's even more complex than ever before. And while we're very good at generating a lot of information about diseases, we're not good at generating knowledge. There are four trillion relationships in our body, and we don't know yet how all of them work and how they connect with one another. And that sounds like a great problem for AI to solve, and, and it is. And over the last decade, since AI uh, came to this specific market of life science and R&D, we've seen some success <coughs> where you had AI first biotech companies, which would be a full stack company that built from scratch with the goal of bringing a drug to market. And we've seen some success where AI design drugs or AI first biotech company can actually start bringing drugs into clinical trial for a much lower cost and much faster. 
And that is absolutely fantastic. But in our perspective, that's not actually what's going to make the most impact because that doesn't scale. And I'm sure that's something that people love to talk about Google, which is scale. But at the end of the day, if you have four or five or even 10 biotech companies, each one, each bring one drug to market, impacting a few hundreds of people, that's not what's going to make a massive impact on the world. And that's why at Benchside, we decided to build Ascend. So Ascend is a technology. It's an AI platform that is focused on understanding all the evidence senses and all the insights that have ever been discovered in labs, in clinical trial, and so on in disease biology and connecting them to build a scalable AI assistant for the smartest scientists in the world. So that's what we do at Benchside. <clears throat> and our AI assistant is deployed with some of the brightest scientists and the largest pharmaceutical companies in the entire world. And what we help them is really understand how disease biology works over the first seven years of drug discovery. And that's focused on helping them do three very vital aspects of their job, which is coming up with the best ideas, so the best hypothesis of how disease biology can actually work and which targets can be associated to potential diseases. Two, after you have that amazing idea that is supported with AI, how do you design an experiment to validate or invalidate that as fast as you can? And finally, how do you increase the chances of everything you've done in the preclinical stage to actually work in humans? And this three parts combined takes seven years today and they lead to a 90% failure rate. So there's a massive opportunity for AI on two aspects here. One, leading to better outcomes, but also with the faster and the cheaper part. So when we build our platform, this AI assistant for scientists, we really focused on two aspects, which are very, very, very important in our specific domain, which is scientific veracity. So everything we do can only scale from an engineering perspective, but it has to be scientifically accurate. And that's a heavy task and why we have over 100 scientists working at Benchside. And the second piece, it has to be enterprise ready. So we deploy our technology with some of the most complex organizations in the entire world, which is the biggest pharma in the world. And you can imagine the level of scrutiny, IT, um, and so on that we have to go through in each one of those organizations. So building our platform to be enterprise ready was very, very important for us. So how did we do this? <clears throat> A few steps. First step was getting access to primary research through partnership with some of the largest publishers in the world and really get access to hundreds and hundreds of data sources, some open access, some behind paywall, some internally within pharma, and really collect the entire landscape and history of biomedical research. That's step one. Step two is doing something that no one has ever done before, which is really understanding all the insight and all the evidence in all of this massive amount of research and connecting it together. And to connect it together, we really had to build uh, domain-specific LLMs, both on the vision part and on the text, to mimic how a scientist would understand all this information, but at scale. And then even build smaller models to generate derivative information, derivative insight, the same way a scientist would as well. So we took this massive corpus of data, extracted the evidence, connected them together, and structured them together. As we were doing this process, and this is why we have so many scientists working at the company, it was very important for us to, again, have scientific veracity, which is why we infused um, scientists into this entire process to make sure that our machine learning models also correct from a scientific and biological perspective. And in our company, pretty much every engineer works uh, side by side with a scientist to make sure that the outcome will actually, at the end of the day, be useful to a scientist asking our technology questions. And through this entire process, we created two assets that basically supercharge and drive everything that we do, which is our evidence map, which is basically all the evidence and all the insight that have ever been generated in science. And the second piece is our ontology knowledge base. Why is this so important? And that's actually very specific to science. Because in science, unfortunately, everything has 20 or 30 different names, and everything can be the same, and it's very complicated. And there are many, many relationships between different genes and diseases and pathways and processes. And if you don't understand that, there is no way you can build something that's valuable. And building this too, it's really what drives everything we do, and this has been almost a decade of work. <clears throat> now, to make sure this tool is actually an AI system and is used by scientists and for scientists, 
on top of this data foundation that I just showed, we build applications and an interface so scientists can come in and ask questions and get the best answers possible. And those, ans and those questions and answers are based on those vital workflows, which is the main job of scientists, which is coming up with the best hypotheses, designing experiments to validate or invalidate those ideas, and making sure that everything you're working on in animals actually translates into humans. And I know Gen AI is something that obviously we're going to talk about here, and this is exactly where, where it comes in. So for us, what we've done is basically create a symbiotic relationship or a RAG architecture between all the structured data that we have cleaned and connected over the past decade with the best part of generative AI, which is summarization, conversation, and infused it with explainability and limited hallucinations, which is really, really important in our space, if you think about it, because scientists are trained um, to be skeptical. So if they can see the evidence and the reasoning and the scientific reasoning behind anything that a machine generates, we will not get very far. And this also is exactly where we partner with Google. So <clears throat> for us, what we saw that while foundation models are fantastic, um, in this specific space, you really need domain expertise. And that's why when we were approached by Google to potentially try out MedLM, we were so excited because we had an hypothesis that if we can take a foundation model that has been trained on data that's close to what we do, which is the medical data, it will probably outperform your generic, um, your generic foundation models and can solve problems that we were not able to solve before with foundation models. And that's exactly what happened. So the first use case, uh, use case we applied this on was around biomarker identification. Biomarkers are very, very important to help ensure that whatever you're working on in the, cl in the preclinical stage, which is mostly animal studies, actually works in humans. And that's absolutely vital because that's the point of uh, preclinical R&D and drug discovery of actually getting a medicine that works in humans. And biomarkers really help you do a few things. One, understand how diseases actually progress and how they work, but also how to design the right endpoints in clinical trials, which basically will tell you if your drug worked or not. And we focused primar primarily on can we apply foundation models or MEDLM to basically identify biomarkers like scientists would, but do that at scale and really create that AI system experience for the scientist. And I'm ha really happy to say that we were able to do that. And the result of this was, as reported by scientists working at one of the biggest pharma companies in the world, that this actually increased their productivity by over 40%. Like I, I don't know about a lot of software that actually increased productivity by 40% because that's absolutely kind of mind-blowing. Uh, but that's the impact that we've seen. And what this translates into, it's taking a process that can take months to only a few days. And this is just one use case. And that's why we're so excited to continue working with Google and applying this technology in our space. <laughs>